I'd now like to call upon Professor Mazamil Haq Azad Khan, sir, Professor and Chairperson, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, East West University, to give his uh, gracious speech. Thank you. Please give, her, give him a hand. We have heard uh, the keynote speech by the keynote uh, speaker, uh, very uh, informative and wonderful speech. Uh, as a professor, my target is the student audience, not the other people. That is why I have prepared a presentation on IoT, how it works. Uh, what is the uh, prerequisite of being an IoT engineer? So I would like to talk on how our student can change their lifestyle to be an IoT engineer. So this is Mozamela Kazad Khan from East West University. I'm the professor and chairperson of Computer Science and Engineering Department. So first I will see academically what is IoT. The Internet of Things or IoT is the network of physical things or objects embedded with sensors, electronics, software, and network connectivity. IoT allows objects to be sensed and controlled remotely, creating integration between the physical world and the computer-based system. Practically, IoT is a network of networks. So you see, uh, here is a diagram of uh, many individual networks like transport, education, home, art, business, energy, other. These are individual networks. They are connected to each other. And this network must be made secured, as uh, the keynote speaker said, so with security, analytics, and management. So I will now uh, show you a small video of overview of the IoT. By now, you may have heard the term Internet of Things. Sounds interesting, but what does the Internet of Things actually mean? IoT is an evolution of mobile, home, and embedded applications oh. that are being connected to the internet, integrating greater compute capabilities, and using data analytics to extract meaningful information. Billions of devices will be connected to the internet, and soon, hundreds of billions of devices. As related devices connect with each other, they can become an intelligent system of systems. And with these intelligent devices and systems of systems share data over the cloud and analyze it. They can transform our businesses, our lives, and our world in countless ways. Whether it's improving medical outcomes, getting better products faster with lower development costs, making shopping more enjoyable, or optimizing energy generation and consumption. It's an example of the big picture. Imagine an intelligent device such as a smart traffic camera. The camera can monitor the road for congestion, accidents, and weather conditions, and communicate that status to a gateway that combines it with data from other cameras, creating an intelligent city-wide traffic system. Now, imagine that intelligent traffic system connected to other city-wide transportation systems, which get data from their own intelligent devices, creating an ever-larger intelligent system of systems. The really big possibilities come from analyzing the end-to-end -end data across that system of systems. For example, let's say the city's intelligent traffic system detects massive congestion due to an accident. That insight can be sent to the citywide transportation system, which can analyze the accident's impact on other city systems. Recognizing the accident is near the airport and two city schools, it could notify those systems so they can adjust flight and school schedules. It can also analyze and derive optimal routes around the accident and send those instructions to the city's digital signage system to guide drivers around the accident. 
And that's just one example of the potential benefits that can happen when intelligent devices share insight with other systems, forming ever-expanding systems of systems. So now uh, I will discuss some of the things that are part of the Internet of Things. So the first one, the medical condition monitoring plants for healthcare services, biochip transponders on farm animals, automobiles with built-in sensors, DNA analysis devices for environment, food, pathogen monitoring, temperature and moisture sensors in agriculture fields, RFID tags, and many more. Practically, these devices form an autonomous network, sometimes uh, oil-less autonomous network. Sometimes it is connected networks. Sometimes it is connected through the internet cloud. So these are some of the application areas of IoT, building and home automation. The keynote speaker said a lot of things on that building and home automation, manufacturing, medical and healthcare sectors, agriculture, media, environmental monitoring, infrastructure monitoring, energy monitoring, transportation, caring elderly people, and many more things. So in our uh, department, uh, we are undertaking some projects on IoT in agriculture. So now I will show you a small application of uh, IoT in agriculture. This application is not ours. This is downloaded from uh, internet. This is the soil moisture sensor. It has two copper leads and we are going to dig it inside the soil. The output of the soil moisture sensor is given to the regulator and the output of the regulator is given to a ZigBee. This is the ZigBee and the entire thing is powered by a rechargeable battery here. The, this is acting as a transmitter ZigBee. Now it is sending the soil moisture content to the receiver ZigBee. This is the receiver zippy. It is connected to the microcontroller using a serial TX and RX pin. This is the temperature sensor LM35 that we are using. This, is a, this output of this is connected to the amplifier and the output of the amplifier goes to the ADC. The 8 bit output of the ADC is given to the microcontroller. This is a sprinkler. It is connected to the solenoid wall and the solenoid wall in turn is connected to the relay. The relay is powered by microcontroller. The microcontroller tests the soil moisture and the temperature and then depending on the threshold it turns on and off the relay. Relay in turn turns off on and off the solenoid wall accordingly. Since the soil is dry right now, the receiver Zigbee will receive this information and send it serially to the microcontroller. The microcontroller in turn has to tell the relay to turn on. This turns on the solenoid wall. We are going to turn on the microcontroller now. The relay is on. So is the solenoid wall. Now since the penetration of this water into the soil takes a lot of time, for the convenience of the video, we are going to put water onto the moisture sensor. Now this in turn will turn off the relay.
and the solenoid valve as well as the sprinkler. So this was a uh, small example of uh, applying IoT in agriculture. So this can be extended uh, for a large area of the farming area, having multiple sensors and having autonomous network among them, uh, etc. So here uh, I am showing a very uh, preliminary structure of uh, IoT, say the sensors actuators and devices that sends the information uh, that we want to sense. Then the information is sent to an embedded electronics uh, that is connected with an embedded software to process those informations. Then those informations are communicated with other devices through internet cloud. And actually, whenever a decision making is needed, then we need to use data analysis technique and data mining techniques. So when the decision is done, then that is transmitted uh, to other side. And the other side also requires embedded electronics along with embedded software. And those decisions then uh, are transmitted to the user interface and controllers. So. These connections, as I said earlier, may be wireless connections. These connections may be through internet or maybe the wired connections. So now, here is the sum of the list that uh, a intended IoT engineer must have. The first thing is the sensor technology. We have seen that the basic component of IoT is the sensors, as the keynote speaker also said. So IoT engineer must have uh, clear knowledge of sensor technology, then embedded electronics technology. Uh, in our demo, we showed that uh, the everything is controlled using microcontroller. So embedded electronics technology must be uh, there. Then embedded software technology. Computer software technology also, because uh, many of the decisions has to be taken by the remote computers. computers. Data communication technology, internet technology, data mining technology, big data analytics, and many more. So if we want to be an IoT engineer, then we must have these knowledge. Actually, IoT is an interdisciplinary uh, area. It, is, uh, it does not belong to computer science. It does not belong to uh, statistics or uh, data mining or data analysis is, does not belong to electrical engineering, electronics. Actually, it is a uh, teamwork of uh, computer science people, uh, statisticians for big data analysis, for uh, electrical and electronic engineers for having all those uh, electronics, etc. So this was uh, all about my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your uh, gracious speech.